We've got not just one, but two Woj bombs during that commercial break. Go ahead, Director Kathy, make it happen. Uh, this is where I miss the crank because you guys would both be just like covered I, 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 in smoke I like right now. the smoke because it just, it like actually frames me very well, <laughs> right? It like smokes you, smokes you, and it's just me doing this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the news. Houston trading Victor Oladipo to Miami, a source telling ESPN. Hear that, also, Kirk? Kyle Lowry Woj tweeting is staying That's mind -blowing. with... Toronto, which Richard said 10 minutes ago would not happen, so he might be in a penalty box. For I was quoting of, Ramona. <laughs> I'm kidding, Ramona. I'm Do kidding. Not I'm throw kidding. Our I'm friends kidding. Under the bus. Please. I said I was kidding before I finished the <laughs> sentence. <laughs> All right, Zach, what do you think of those two moves? I'm very surprised by the Lowry one, given all the moving parts in Toronto, jettisoning some guys to open up roster spots. But look, they didn't have to trade them. They're still a decent team. They're still set to be a decent team next year. They can sign and trade them this summer. Oladipo to Miami has been rumored forever. My guess here, until we get the terms from Woj, is that the price was just lower than it would have been for Kyle Lowry, that, t that Toronto held the line at a place where Miami was uncomfortable. And they said, okay, you know what? We'll take this guy. We'll get his bird rights. He helps us this season. We get to look at him, see if he looks healthier, see if he looks a little more productive for us, and, and we'll see what happens in the summer. And the deal with Lowry now, obviously, staying in Toronto. Look, of course, they can re-sign him considering that they did have offers from around the league. And, and as we've talked about a lot, Zach, it's a little bit of a lost season for them at this point. Sure, they could get there. They're in 11th now. They could get into a play-in. They could win their play-in. They could get a first-round playoff matchup. But if you're a team that just won the title a couple of years ago, everyone would understand if they had completed this fire sale. Why do you think, even if the offers weren't quite what they wanted, they decided to hold firm here? Do you really think they're going to sign and trade him or just sign and keep him? I think they could, yeah. I mean, why not sign and trade him? They could this summer. There will be a market for him this summer. He's still a very good player. And as far as why they keep him, look, he has tremendous institutional value to their team. He's the greatest player in franchise history. If the offers were middling, if the offers weren't up to what they thought they should be, fine. I mean, this is a team that, you know, if you just give them a bad first round pick, they don't really care. They think we have a history of getting guys that aren't even drafted and turning them into players that are better than first round picks. So you got to give them something that matters to give up a player like Kyle Rowley. I'm not totally shocked. I, I am surprised given all the machinations that were going on today. It, it is definitely a plot twist I didn't expect, but we'll see what happens. Plot twist, plot <laughs> twist. I love trade deadline day. All right, so Kyle Lowry staying with the Raptors means that the teams that were bidding for him aren't getting him. So we just talked about Miami. Victor Oladipo is gonna fill that need there. Robert, you're with the Lakers so much as one of their studio analysts. What do you think about the fact that they are not getting Kyle Lowry? We'll now move on to the buyout market. What do you think the impact is? Because clearly they just weren't willing to give up what Toronto wanted. I think in that trade, they wanted THT. And we've seen what THT can do. He has a huge uh, up, upside to him. He's only 20 years old and he has a huge upside. And he's learning from one of the best guys in the game in LBJ. So to go out and Kyle Lowry and mortgage the farm for this guy, who, like Jeff says, is a rental guy for one season, isn't feasible for the Lakers. You cannot do that because you're going to give up too much for one guy. And then it's taking you to the salary cap. And then you lose your, your future. I know everybody said your future. No, it is your future. You no, know, you don't know what's going to happen with LeBron James. You don't know what's going to happen with AD. So you have to keep your future and always plan for that because if you don't, then you're going to be looking like some of these teams like, you know, like the, like the Celtics did a couple of years, like, like the um, Spurs have, because we always talk about potential. I always laugh when people say, oh, the Spurs were that team that always wanted those foreign players, mm -hmm. and then they didn't get those foreign players that didn't turn out, and that's what you think about with these picks right here. So you just got to stay solid and keep THC in the house. We said it yesterday. Just because you're thirsty doesn't mean you have to drink poison. It was, you know, it, it's true in this situation where it's like, I believe Kyle Lowry should have moved on. But if the asking price isn't right and you feel like you have better options, whether via sign and trade, very keep him on your roster, it, it was a fire sale. You know, Ramona, Zach, everybody's kind of surprised that with all the teams that were offering that they didn't, didn't just take the best offer and start this process. But one thing that no one on this panel will do is really truly question Masai Jury. No one is going to question Masai Jury. Right. So whatever his plan is, we just have to wait and see.
Well, it's interesting, too, on the Lakers side. We're going to talk about buyouts in just a few minutes with Bobby Marks, but this could tip also, hey, they might know something about whether a guy like Andre Drummond is going to come their way so they don't have to give up THT or mortgage the farm for Kyle Lowry. Perk, what about Philadelphia? They are also not getting Kyle Lowry out of all of this. How do you feel about what they have and without him, their place in the East? To be honest, I, I really didn't think they needed to really push for him like that. It would have been a great addition, but I still healthy. If the Philadelphia 76ers are healthy, I still have them as the best team in the Eastern Conference. I mean, they're stacked. The chemistry is there. Guys are being stars in their role. You look at Tobias Harris, he's playing at an all-star level. Seth Curry is a is a to me is one of the most underrated players in the game today. He gets credit for shooting, but he's more than just a shooter. You, they have ex they have extremely good depth in the White Howard, Shake Milton. Like they have a roster, and you can tell these guys are committed. They're bought in. Just look at the way that they're playing right now without their best player in Joel and B. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.